Welcome Storytime friends. I'm so glad you could come to Storytime with me again today. We've got some fun stories to read today about trees. What do the trees at your house look like today? It's spring, so do they have the pretty buds on them yet? Are the leaves getting ready to come out? Or do you have trees where the leaves are already coming out already? No, I wonder what they look like. You have to pay attention when you go outside next time. Well, the first story we're going to read is about a brother and sister who go and explore in the forest and they imagine what it would be like to be a tree. Have you ever thought about that before? Let's see what happens. It's called If I Were a Tree and it's written by Andrea Zimmerman and it's the pictures are by Ling Ling Song and it comes from Lee and Lo Books. I were a tree. They're getting ready to go. If I were a tree, I know how I'd be. My trunk strong and wide, my limbs side to side. I'd stand towering tall, high above all, my leaves growing big and buds on each twig. I were a tree, that's how I'd be. If I were a tree, I know what I'd feel. The warmth of the sun, the squirrels on the run. I'd feel nests on my back, bats hiding till dark, the climbing of boots and worms by my roots. If I were a tree, that's what I'd feel. If I were a tree, I know what I'd taste. The layers of land, the soil and sand, I'd taste old buried bones and pebbles and stones and waters that flood and minerals in mud. I were a tree, that's what I'd taste. If I were a tree, I know what I'd smell. Sweet honey and bees and skunk on the breeze. I'd smell smoke in the air, the breath of a bear, old fungus de decay and rain on the way. If I was a tree, that's what I'd smell. If I were a tree, I know what I'd hear. Far thunders, low growl, the hoot of an owl. I'd hear snakes in a hole, the sneeze of a mole, a rocky stream flow, the swishing wind blow. If I were a tree, that's what I'd hear. If I were a tree, I know what I'd see. Hills misty with fog, the life in a log. I'd see blossoms appear and tiny new deer, a web draped with dew, the dawn turning blue. If I were a tree, that's what I'd see. If I were a tree, I know what I'd love. The wind's playful tugs, the humming of bugs. I'd love smelling the pine and geese in a line, the taste of the earth and every seed's birth. If I were a tree, that's what I'd love. If I were a tree, I know what I'd know, that days come and go and green leaves will grow. I'd know branches can bend and cold spells will end. 
that spring will renew and life carries through. If I were a tree, that's what I'd know. And back here, it gives you some ideas about how you can explore trees using those senses. Seeing, you can look at the shape of the tree. Is it bushy or is it skinny? Is it tall or short? What kind of leaves does it have? You can touch the tree. See, how does the bark feel? And how do the leaves feel? Not all leaves feel the same. You can smell. Is there blossoms on the tree? Sometimes if it's a fruit tree, you get a certain smell too. Now, tasting. You probably can't taste the tree that's out in your backyard, but there are lots of trees that we do taste because there's lots of fruit grows on trees and some spices, but that come from trees too. And you can explore with hearing. On a blistery day, you can hear the wind blowing through the trees. I think we've had a lot of that lately around here, haven't we? And so there's lots of ways that you can explore the trees using those same things. So that was a fun book. I like that book. Well, um, have you ever had a tree house up in a tree? Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, I always thought that would be lots of fun. Let's see what happens when a little boy named Russell moves into a new house and there's a great big tree in the backyard. Mm, I don't know what he wants to do with it. So let's find out what happens. The Better Tree Fort by Jessica Scott Karen. Pictures by Quinn Lang. It comes from Groundwood Books. Russell's new house was better than his last one because of the giant maple tree in the backyard. It had great big limbs and a trunk so wide even Russell's dad could not wrap his arms around it. Russell said to his dad, let's build a tree fort. Russell's dad said, I don't know much about building. He looked up, up, up. Or tree forts, he added. Russell said, I'll draw you a plan. What's this? Russell's dad asked. A balcony to watch from. And this? A slide for quick escapes. And this? A skylight to see the stars. And this? a basket to haul up our sleeping bags and binoculars and my big book of birds. Let's go to the lumber store, Russell's dad said. They roamed up and down the aisles. Russell's dad looked lost until a man in an apron came to help. Russell showed him the plan. The man in the apron sold them tools and lumber, and when they got home, they spread everything out in the backyard like an enormous puzzle. Russell nailed his plan to the fence near the maple tree. Russell's dad took a long time to get started. He measured things over and over again, and there were four more trips to the lumber store. But slowly, the tree fort started to take shape. First the floor, then the walls with the cutout windows. The roof was particularly tricky. When his dad was done, Russell painted the trap door robin's egg blue. It's perfect, Russell said, breathing in the sweet smell of fresh cut wood. But there's no skylight or balcony, Russell's dad admitted. Or escape slide, he added. It's perfect, Russell repeated. They ate peanut butter and jam sandwiches for dinner in the tree fort and slept up top in their sleeping bags as the night sky filled with glittering stars. They even thought they might have heard an owl. Do you see the owl in the picture?
The next morning, as Russell was spotting birds from his tree fort, he heard a hammer and a table saw. A construction crew in hard hats was building something in the backyard three houses over. Russell watched all day from his tree fort. What were they building? He gasped. They were building a tree fort. Only this tree fort was bigger and straighter. It had a slide for quick escapes and turrets like a castle. It even had real working lights. The construction crew tested them on, off, on, off, on, off. When the tree fort was done, a boy the same size as Russell came into the backyard. He nodded at the foreman, then climbed up into the tree fort. The construction tr crew packed their tools into a van and drove off. Russell scrambled down his rope ladder and over to the backyard three houses away. He stood at the bottom of the better tree fort. It was so large it blocked the sun. Hello, Russell called. The boy Russell's size stepped out onto the balcony and peered down at him. Russell said, I'm Russell. He pointed over his shoulder. That's my tree fort. I'm Warren, said the boy. Come on up. Russell climbed the spiral stairs and looked around, astonished. There was a radio plugged into an electric socket. There was a rug on the floor and shelves filled with dishes. There were bunk beds with pillows. There was even a skylight. Warren turned down the music. Would you like something to drink, he asked. I have apple juice. Russell said, yes, please. He added, you have a very nice tree fort. Warren said, my dad ordered the plans. Russell finished his juice. He had been taught to rinse his dishes when he was done. And because his tree fort had everything, Russell asked, where's your kitchen sink? A kitchen sink with running water up here, Warren scoffed. Russell shrugged. He said, I'm sure that somewhere there's a tree fort with a kitchen sink. You're right, Warren said with a frown. There probably is. Russell asked, do you want to see my tree fort sometime? Warren nodded, but he was still thinking about the better tree fort with the kitchen sink. When Russell got home, his dad was cutting the lawn. He waved as Russell climbed his rope ladder. Then Rus when Russell reached the top, he waved back from his trap door. He watched his dad mow. When his dad was done gardening, he joined Russell up top. They looked out the window at the tree fort three houses over. Russell's dad said, there will always be a better tree fort. Russell smiled and then he said, but not a better dad. The end. I wish I could go play in Russell's tree fort. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, here's the craft that comes in your April take and make bag. You can make your own tree. You have a tree cut out in your bag that you glue on the page, and then you can put the leaves on it however you want. I showed you a couple of different ways here. These are all just scrunched up and put on, and these are put on so that they stand out a little more. And you might even think of another way to put the trees on. And then you can finish the picture however you want to finish it. You could even put a tree house in, one, in, in the tree up here if you want to do that too. That would be fun. So if you haven't got your take and make bag yet, you can come in and, and pick one up yet this month to do those crafts. Well, we hope to see you at the library soon. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.